so motivation. In program verification, we want to check uh, if a program uh, follow a given specification stating what uh, uh, programs could or could not uh, do. So we have uh, a model of the, the program, which is um, um, a formal representation of the behavior of the program, and we have a specification, and then the, then the verifier checks uh, if the program is correct or not with respect to the specification. Um, the majority of works about uh, pro uh, program verification uh, deals on only with the particular specification we call the trace properties. And uh, trace property cannot express a relation between uh, uh, executions, so we cannot express uh, with uh, uh, trace property useful specification like information flow. And the goal uh, of uh, my research is uh, to mm, verify mm, um, specification which go beyond uh, classic uh, trace properties. Uh, so a specification is uh, basically a property uh, of uh, the program. So mm, the general meaning of the term property is uh, just the set of objects which uh, have uh, that property. So for instance, if you have uh, numbers, a uh, property of uh, numbers is uh, just a set of numbers. If you have uh, programs, um, we want to, uh, so a uh, property of uh, programs, a semantic property of uh, program is uh, just a, a set of uh, semantics. So semantics is uh, the formal uh, um, description of uh, the behavior of a, s uh, of a program. So suppose that uh, uh, the semantics of a uh, program are a set of uh, traces where a trace uh, is a uh, an execution of, rep represents an execution of uh, the program. So we have uh, three uh, semantics for three different programs. Trace properties collect um, all the execution which satisfy the, the properties. So uh, a trace property is a set of execution in these settings. Instead, the hyper properties are a set of set of execution. So we can see here that uh, um, in this case, uh, Hyper property are property of semantics in the sense of the general term of property. Instead, trace property are property of traces. So in uh, this setting, we can express relation between uh, uh, different execution. Um, so mm, in the classical setting of verification, we have that semantics and uh, mm, property are uh, on the same domain, so we have semantic we are which are a set of traces and property which are a set of uh, traces. So we can use, uh, um, so the satisfiability relation is a set inclusion. So with the, and the satisfi satisfiability um, relation is preserved by uh, over approximation. So we can over approximate a given semantics in order to uh, verify the, hyper the property. This is not old uh, for uh, hyper property. So yeah, if you want to check if this uh, semantics, which is a set of traces, is contained in this uh, uh, hyper property with an over approximation adding uh, traces, uh, we cannot say it state anything uh, about uh, the verification of the, the uh, hyper property. Uh, but we can still use uh, over approximation. We ju just uh, have to move up to set of sets. Here we take a set containing the semantics of our program, which is a set of sets, and with another approximation, which adds uh, uh, sets uh, of traces, we can uh, verify the hyper property with over approximations. So we need uh, some sort of uh, hyper semantics, uh, which is a, uh, a semantics of the program of the programs uh, of the program uh, uh, computing at the level of set of sets. Um, among all, uh, uh, all uh, hyper properties, there are some with uh, uh, which are uh, more easier to or easier to uh, to verify. For instance, we have the subset clause hyper property. S uh, a subset clause hyper property is a set of sets uh, which is subset clause. Mm -hmm. And um, so, for this kind of property, we can, in order to show that a semantics is contained in, the, in an hyper property. Uh, is not contained in an hyper property. We uh, just have to show a counterexample, which is a subset of the semantics. These uh, do not really help uh, us so much because, uh, in the worst case, we have to show the full uh, semantics. Uh, so, but uh, we can uh, restrict uh, these uh, um, 
these hyper properties and uh, we call them bounded subset clause hyper properties. And uh, these uh, hyper properties are such that uh, the counter example we have to show in order to disprove the hyper properties is uh, always finite and this is bounded uh, to a given k. So here, if uh, our semantics is not contained in the hyper property, then there exists a, a counter example of the cardinality um, at most k, which is not which is uh, not in the hyper property, so it, it is the counter example. Um, so if we collect uh, all the um, ref um, refutation witnesses of uh, a given hyper properties, uh, which are the counter examples, uh, and we find that a semantics uh, is a superset of one of these uh, counter examples, we can uh, uh, state that uh, our semantics is not in the hyper property. And for a bounded subject cause hyper property, for K bounded subject cause hyper properties, this set contains only sets with cardinality K. So we can uh, verifi verifi verify that uh, uh, given semantics uh, satisfy uh, an hyper property just checking all its uh, subset with cardinality k. And we will see later because this is uh, important for verification. Um, what about expressiveness? Um, it turns out uh, that uh, bounded subset clause hyper property mm, comprise a lot of uh, useful specification. Uh, in the classic uh, setting of trace property, we have the well-known uh, safety evidence classification, and safety means that uh, r uh, nothing bad happens, and liveness means uh, something good eventually happens. This concept uh, can are lifted to uh, to the hyper level, so we have hyper liveness, hyper safety, and um, clearly uh, the safety and the liveness are special cases of uh, this. Uh more uh, general concept. And uh, we have that uh, bounded subset clause hyper property uh, comprise uh, all K hyper safety. K hyper safety can be disproved showi showing um, set of prefixes with cardinality at most K. And uh, it turns out that uh, bounded bound subset clause hyper property contain also some hyper liveness. And uh, we, we find that there is at least uh, one uh, significant hyper property, which is a syn synchronization <laughs> between uh, uh, execution, which is, which is uh, hyper liveness. So this uh, part of the figure is not empty. And uh, but indeed, uh, we have uh, that also all liveness, standard liveness are, are bounded, but not uh, K hyper safety <coughs> for any K. So there, is a, there are a lot of uh, hyper property which are uh, bounded, but not K hyper safety for uh, any K. So there are a lot of specific specification we can uh, describe with bounded subset clause hyper properties. <coughs> and uh, then we wondered. What is the non hyper property bounded by C? Yes, two bounded. Um, <coughs> then we wondered uh, how can we, um, let's say, adapt uh, classical uh, static analysis uh, me verification method to for the verification to of uh, hyper properties. Don't suppose to have a simple deterministic uh, language and uh, like this, uh, and we won't <coughs> and suppose to have a collecting semantics which computes basically, in this case, post conditions uh, of a given uh, program statement. The concrete semantics uh, links uh, a memory before and after the execution of a program. This is uh, quite standard. There is a uh, the post-condition semantics uh, have a nice uh, fixed point uh, definitions and this uh, computes the direct image of the concrete uh, semantics uh, and uh, it is a correct uh, completeness, complete uh, of course. Uh, so if, uh, if we run the collecting semantics of uh, starting from the set of all inputs, we have uh, the strongest post-condition, uh, which is the strongest program property we can check uh, with these uh, uh, semantics. And then we, we try to lift uh, this uh, se collective semantics uh, to mm, the hyper level, to the level of set of sets. And uh, we, mm, for all commands, um, we take the direct image of the collecting semantics, the standard collecting semantics. But for the lift, uh, for the while, sorry, um, we cannot uh, choose the direct image because it's not correct. 
so we came up with uh, three arbitrary solutions for computing uh, the hypersemantics of uh, uh, while loops. Um, I, I will go in detail only of the last one for space for uh, time reasons. And all of these uh, functions are not monotone, so there exists the this fixed point of uh, the loops uh, of the loop. And but unfortunately, none of them compute the direct image of P, which is our goal. But still, are they all, all of them are correct, so all of them approximate the strongest hyper property of uh, the program. So mm, we can use uh, this uh, collecting hyper semantics in order to verify hyper properties. Uh, let's take, uh, uh, let's see how the standard uh, collecting semantics for post condition works for uh, while loops. Uh, in this case, we, we have the computation for the while loops starting for a simple set containing two and five. Uh, at the beginning, we have the empty set, uh, then we push uh, in the input X. Uh, and uh, then we have the, uh, the filter function here, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, which is uh, the semantic for booleans, which uh, filters the, the, mm, the memory which satisfies the, the, the boolean guard. Then we compute uh, the body of, uh, of, uh, of the while in this uh, set of uh, uh, memory, and then we join the result, and we repeat until we get a fixed point. And uh, then we'll uh, filter with the negation of uh, the guard and we obtain the post condition, uh, which is uh, the semantics of uh, our uh, loop. Um, for the mixed lift, we have, uh, we can do the same for the mixed lift. And we start uh, with the set containing the whole uh, input set uh, as before. And at the beginning, we have the, the empty set. Then we push in the input X, calligraphic X. And then we, for each set containing the, in the input set of sets, um, we mm, apply the classic uh, Boolean guard. So we uh, filter out, we, we filter the, the, the two in the this branch and five in this other branch. Um, then we compute the collecting standard collecting semantics on the true branch and we join the result we obtaining three and five. And we do this uh, process for all uh, set uh, contained in the set of set. And then we join uh, with, uh, with X again. So we can, uh, and we repeat until we get a fixed point. So you can see for this, in this example, which uh, the iteration of the loop uh, are uh, monotone. And uh, finally, we, we apply the um, hypersemantics for Boolean guard to the negation of uh, the, the condition, which is the lift uh, of uh, the standard uh, Boolean um, semantics. Here we have two, of two, 2 and 5 goes to 5, 3 and 5 goes to 5, and 4 and 5 goes to 4 and 5. As we can see, uh, this uh, semantics is uh, correct because it contains uh, the collecting uh, semantics. So we have that um, collecting hyper semantics introduce incompleteness. So this is uh, quite strange because uh, usually the incompleteness is due to the uh, abstract domain. Here we have incompleteness in uh, the concrete. But fortunately, this is not a concern for bounded sumse closed hyper properties because um, all these semantics we have uh, defined are uh, complete for uh, bounded sumse closed uh, uh, hyper properties. So if a program uh, satisfies the hyper property, then we can use each one of these semantics in order to verify uh, the hyper property. And the extra information, the spur information added by the hyper collecting semantics is uh, does not affect the um, verification process, in this case, for bounded subset closed hyper properties. Uh, so uh, in order to lift, the, let's say, static analysis uh, to the upper level, we have the concrete semantics, we, have a way we need a way to, um, to compute the hyper semantics, but we need also the abstract semantics in order to make the computation uh, effective. So we need abstract domain. Um, we, we have seen that for uh, uh, bounded and subset closed properties, uh, there is uh, 
always a pattern to follow in order to build a hyperdomain. There is a an inner abstraction which abstract execution, so it adds trace at the, in the inner level, and the outer abstraction which abstracts semantics, so add sets of uh, traces. So for instance, we have the inner abstraction which is an abstraction from a concrete domain to an, ab to an abstract domain, suppose the concrete domain is the power set of memories. So the, the abstraction maps a set of memories to an abstract element. Then we can easily e lift this, um, this abstraction to the power set with a well-known construction. And um, uh, here we, c we do not require that the, the abstraction of the inner level is uh, a Galois connection because the Galois connection is forced by the, the lift. So we don't care. And uh, then we, an, uh, we, we have another abstraction, which is uh, an abstract domain of the power set of the abstract uh, element. So we, we compose, we have that, uh, the we have uh, a Galois connection between the abstract hyper abstract domain and the power set of the power set of memory in this case. So, mm, I can give you some example all, uh, of uh, how to build uh, hyper uh, domains. So we, for, insta for instance, if we want to compute uh, um, constant propagation at the hyper level, uh, it, it does not make so much sense to, leave mm, to lift the, the construction for uh, constant propagation to the set of sets because um, it does not add uh, so much information. So in order to compute, uh, to um, compute hyperlevel constants, uh, we take uh, all the, this is the mm, flat domain for constants, uh, we have all the constants uh, here, and uh, we map all the constants in the given, uh, in a abstract element, uh, which uh, means that uh, here we don't care which is the, the, mm, the constant that have each uh, inner set. Uh, we only need that th there is a, a every one of these uh, set contained in the set of set is constant. So we can have five here, four, we don't care. Uh, we just need that the inner semantics is a constant. And so we can we give, the we, mm, we do the power set of this uh, set of uh, elements. And so we have that uh, if a uh, set of sets uh, of um, memory is uh, abstracted in uh, one of these uh, element is, uh, let's say, constant. And this, is, uh, this can be used for uh, qualitative information flow. And, um, but uh, we can see, we will see the example in a few minutes. Uh, but the nice thing that is this construction uh, can be generalized. Instead of having a year constant, we, we can uh, use another abstraction, for instance, the parity. And uh, so we can verify, verify in the same, basically in the same way, also, for instance, uh, abstract non-interference. And another construction is uh, hyperlever intervals. So we have a set of intervals and uh, we can uh, easily uh, Construct uh, an interval over a given uh, complete lattice, so we can give uh, we can construct uh, interval over intervals. In this case, we have uh, an interval over intervals, and the concretization is uh, the set of all in uh, of all inter of all intervals between these two, and this can be used for quantitative information flow. So we can uh, measure how much information is leaked if it is uh, leaked. Um, so coming back to the example of non-interference, uh, we have uh, that uh, a program satisfies non-interference if and only if the hypercollecting semantics, uh, which is the post-condition hypercollecting semantic we, we have seen before, is contained uh, in the hyper uh, in uh, in, the, in these hyper properties. Here we can take uh, all the subsets uh, of uh, memory with cardinality two. Uh, but uh, we take only the one that agree with the low on low variables. We can uh, we can have this uh, double implication because uh, uh, no interference is a uh, two bounded subject clause hyper properties. So this is uh, an important fact. And um, 
So we have this set of set of uh, memory consisting uh, each set is consisting into memory and uh, uh, suppose uh, for uh, for simplicity that um, memory um, we that we have only one low variable. So in this case, uh, uh, this set uh, agree on the low variable. So here for al for uh, the low variable we have only one uh, value. So with the constant uh, propagation we have uh, that this set uh, point to a given constant. This one uh, points to another constant, and then we can make uh, hyperleven constants and say that uh, uh, this uh, the input here, uh, the input here is uh, constant. So this set of set of memory is constant, and uh, if we compute the hypercollecting semantics of uh, on uh, this uh, set of set, and uh, we apply the, the same abstraction here on the, on the result, uh, and we find that uh, the Abstract, uh, abstract element uh, that uh, we obtain is uh, uh, is constant or less. Uh, we can uh, prove uh, non interference because basically here we say that for we have uh, the classical pattern for non interference from uh, um, from set of set of uh, um, memory which agree on low variables. We have a set of set of memory which agree on low variables. Uh, but um, hyperproperties are not uh, restricted to information flow. Clearly, information flow control is the leading uh, motivation in all uh, its flavor. For instance, on interference, uh, de dependency, program slicing, code injection, and all uh, information flow. But there are more. Uh, there are um, mm, hyperproperty for, uh, for instance, availability. This means that. Uh, um, uh, all execution of a program must reply to a request in a in average uh, within a certain amount of time. We have um, some hyper property for process uh, synchronizations. We can uh, that uh, are clearly specified on multiple executions. We have that uh, cryptography protocol requirements can be expressed with hyper hyper properties and uh, so on. So in conclusion, uh, the contribution of uh, this paper, uh, we define bounded sum cycles hyper properties, which are um, uh, can be disproved with the counter examples uh, with finite cardinality. And uh, they are um, very expressive because uh, comprise all uh, hyper safety and some hyper liveness and hence so other uh, hyper properties which uh, are the uh, intersection between hyper safety and uh, hyper liveness. We give um, a methodology to lift the collecting semantics uh, to the hyper level. Uh, fortunately, in the general case, uh, this construction is not uh, complete, is correct, but uh, not complete. But uh, for subset close, uh, uh, boundless subset close hyper property, this is not a problem because for them uh, this construction is uh, complete. And then we give. Uh, uh um, we specify how to um, uh, build a hyper domain for the verification of uh, hyper property, and we have the three layers abstraction, and we give some design pattern for building uh, hyper domains. And the application uh, we took in consideration here is uh, non interference and abstract non interference, but uh, so future works we want to uh, verify other uh, hyper properties. So that's it. Uh, thanks for your attention. In abstract interpretation, when you have a property, it's a set of elements, so you have a semantics. The, the strongest one is a singleton with this semantics. Yeah. Your semantics is traces, so the collecting semantics should be a set, a singleton of set of traces. And what you do, you take an abstraction of this and you call this collecting semantics. Yes. Then, then you are in trouble because all the things that are uh, lost in this abstraction, you cannot speak about them. So why don't you start with the collecting semantics to be the strongest property of the hyper property, as we call them, uh, of the program? Why do you do this initial abstraction? E for computation uh, problems, because uh, 
uh, it's hard to find a fixed point uh, uh, definition of this. Uh it's trivial. It's a fixed point of the semantics where you put a single term around. Y yes, but. Uh, Uh, yes, because uh, if you want uh, to apply, for instance, a uh, fixed point transfer uh, theorem, you can you have to uh, um, a fixed point definition of the operator computing the yeah, hypercomputer. Yeah, with a single turn around the fixed point definition of the semantics. And you can define your CTO with that. So, it's so your problem is a, a collective semantics. Actually, you start to abstract. Yes, but uh, it's maybe I can I can try to define a more precise hypergolating semantics, but uh, there are some technical problems I, I could not overcome, so maybe I can. Uh, so <coughs> your framework works for a subset closed hyper properties, yes. right? Yeah. So, and you mentioned the list of uh, properties which are subset closed. E yeah, a nice list of hyper properties. Which this one? Yeah. Um, uh, not all are uh, subset closed. Not all of them. Uh, not all of them? No. And so, and so for the not subset closed, you cannot apply your. your this technique. one, no. This ah, okay. okay. That's why you only use your collective semantics, is to abstract. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So the question is, uh, w when you have uh, a not subset closed hyper property, what do you do? Uh, you can, uh, you have to, mm, you have to build uh, a specific uh, um, concrete semantics, which uh, for every hyper property. So there is not a systematic way to have a collective semantics for every hyper property. So, so for, so for a general uh, hyper property, you cannot find uh, uh, collecting hypersemantics uh, wi which works for uh, every hyperproperty. You have to build a specific hypercollecting semantics for the specific hyperproperty and then abstract this one. Okay, I have a second question. So, uh, did you uh, detect uh, precisely uh, in which programs uh, you lose the completeness uh, at the semantic level for the hypersemantics? So, uh, I guess that when wha wha if you consider just programs consisting of a while, there is no problem. But if you inject uh, two, uh, one while inside the yes. other, yes. then you have for sure a problem, more or less. Yes, yes. But uh, for uh, for subset closes, this is not a problem because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, but uh, yes, with uh, nested loops, uh, you you explode your the possibility. <laughs> So this is related to Patrick's question. Is it maybe the case that if you start with hypercollecting semantics, then it's easier to prove that your abstract semantics is sound with respect to hypercollecting semantics than rather than what P Patrick suggested that? Yes, you can build directly a. So basically that that's one of the motivations why you would do this. Yes, because uh, I want to do find a, mm, let's say a, f a framework or something. Uh, more general to in order to uh, to avoid this uh, um, to 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 need to prove this correctness with the concrete semantics uh, every time. Okay. Okay. Are there more questions? If not, let's thank speaker once again.